Hello guys, it's Wills here from Slider. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to build a Hello World app in iOS using Swift. Two little things before we get started. First, this course and the rest of the courses are also available on Udemy. The link is right below in the description of this video. Second thing, if you go to my channel Slide Nerd, and if you go to playlist here, this video is going to be found inside iOS Swift tutorial for beginners. And there's also another playlist called Swift tutorial for beginners, which includes only Swift videos. Okay, let's start. In the previous video, we installed Xcode. In this video, let's start it. We can do that several ways. You can go down here to applications. Just click on the applications icon and you will notice Xcode is already present inside. This is one of the ways you can start it by clicking it or we can just go back and we can type command space on our keyboard and again type Xcode inside that and you will notice that Xcode pops up here. So let's select this application and just double click it or hit return. At this point which you see the Xcode launch screen the launch screen of Xcode has two parts. The large area on the left that says welcome to Xcode and gives you three options and an area on the right side which may be completely blank for you. This area on the right side contains all the recent projects that you have built in Xcode. A project in Xcode is a collection of code, data, images, audio, video and any other thing that combines together to give you a single app. In our case, we have several apps out here that have been made using Xcode and that is exactly what is being listed on the right side. If this is blank, don't worry about it. Now on the left side, there are three options. The first option is something called a playground. You will start the playground, you will type whatever code you want and you will see the output or results of that code in real time without you trying to hit a compile or build button. In the center, we have the option that says create a new Xcode project, which is exactly what we are going to do in this video. You notice it says start building a new iPhone, iPad or Mac application. The third option, which is called check out an existing project, deals with version control systems. And I will be talking about it later because right now it's too much for you to absorb. So let's hit create a new Xcode project. The second screen of Xcode looks a bit something like this. On the left side, there are areas that say iOS and OS X. On the right side, when you select one of these options on the left, you notice some different blocks or boxes popping up, giving you different options. Now, in our case, since we want to make an app for iOS, we are going to select iOS on the left side. Now, there are three options under iOS. The first option, application, lets you do exactly what you think, that is make an app. The second option, framework and library, lets you create code that other people can use in their apps. For example, a fancy 3D login button that everyone can put in their app. The third option, other, includes some options like in-app purchases and there's an empty template here as well. So let's go to the first option, that is application. Once you do that, you will notice that there are again five options here. Now these options are called templates and they determine how you will start your app. For example, the simplest one here says single view application. Now each app, when you open it in your iPhone, opens up in its own screen. Now a single view application simply has one screen. There are other types of applications out there and we will take a look at them as we go further because right now it will be information overload if I dig into everything. So I will select the single view application that is going to create a single screen. Let's hit next at this point and it's going to ask you more details. In the third screen, Xcode wants us to choose some options for our project. For starters, we have to enter the name of our app. You can call it anything you want, but I'm going to call this Hello World. Notice how I'm using camel case. Each word has its first alphabet capitalized and the rest of the alphabet small. The organization name in my case is going to be SlideNerd and the organization identifier is going to be com.slidenerd. You can again enter anything for the organization name here. And notice that as I change the organization name, the product name, the organization identifier, the bundle identifier here gets changed. This bundle identifier is nothing but a unique ID that identifies your app on the App Store. Now for the language part here, there are two options. Obviously there is Swift and Objective-C. I'm going to choose Swift out of that. The devices here is you should determine which device your app should run on. Universal by default means your app will run on iPhone, iPad and any other Apple devices out there. In my case, I'm going to choose iPhone just for now 
which means I'm making this app very specifically to run on the iPhone. The last option used core data, keep it unchecked. We will take a look at what this core data framework is and why we need this in the later videos. At this point, I'm going to hit next. It's going to ask you where do you want to save your project. Now the project and all the files are going to be placed inside a folder. In my case, I have a folder here called iOS and Swift examples within which I'm going to save the project. I simply go down here and I select this option which says create a Git repository. Now this simply means your project is going to be placed under version control. And like I said, I will talk about version control further. I'm going to hit create at this point and if you notice Xcode pops up a new screen and this time our project has finally opened. So let's take a look at what these settings are. The screen can be quite intimidating if you're starting Xcode for the first time. Let's try to divide it into different parts and try to understand what each part does. There's an area on the left, a left pane, a central area and a pane on the right. Let's take a look at what is there on the left side. Let's zoom in and figure out. Once you do that, you will notice that there are one, two, three, four, eight tabs here at the top. We are currently in the first tab, which is called the project navigator. Like I said, a project in Xcode is a collection of files that is images and all the other things that are needed to make a single app. And you see those files here being displayed in a nice hierarchical organized manner. The first one, of course, is called hello world, which is the same name as our project name. Now this item basically is the settings of our project. For example, if you zoom out, you will notice that it gives you the option to select devices here. You can select iPhone, iPad, Universal and so on. There are many other settings out here and we'll be talking about them slowly and steadily as we go through this series. The second item here is the folder called Hello World. It's again always named after your project. Now this is where you will notice that all your code files are present. For example, if you collapse this, you notice that the code files don't appear anymore. You expand this and you will see those files again. Now this is where you'll be working most of the time and you're welcome to create subfolders under this hello world folder to organize code if that's what you prefer. The next important file for a discussion would be main.storyboard. If you select that file, you will notice now that the center of the screen has a box and it says view controller. Now this area represents the screen of your iPhone. In other words, it is the user interface with which the user is going to work with. You can drag and drop controls inside this. You can place whatever you want. And there are a lot of widgets available for doing that. So we will take a look at how to use those widgets as we go further in the series as well. But right now you have a question, right? At the start of this video, we selected an iPhone for making the app. And you notice a square here, which definitely doesn't look like any iPhone. And the reason for that is simple. Apple wants you to make user interface without thinking about what type of device you're working on. For example, it could be an iPhone 4S or an iPad mini, whatever it is, the user interface should work. We'll be editing this file main.storyboard to make our hello world display inside the screen. But before we do that, let's go on the left and try to explore some more folders. For example, there's one called supporting files here. And there's another file inside that folder called info.plist. Now this file basically tells what configuration or features your device must have in order to run this app. And you won't be spending a lot of time here and you won't be putting any Swift files inside this folder. It's just extra information or configuration information that is needed by your app when it's going to run on the person's iPhone or iPad. Now let's take a look at the other folder here which says hello world test. And again, you will notice that it has two items inside. There's a hello world test or Swift file here. And there's a supporting files folder here again an info.plist is here so in summary this folder hello world test is going to let you write unit tests for your application and we will be talking about what those unit tests are why you need them what you can do with them as we go further last but not the least you have this folder called products on the left hand side if you expand this you notice that there are two files and they are both in red there's a hello world.app there's a hello world test.exe test. Now this .app file is what the user is going to install from the app store. It's in red currently because we have not run the app yet. So it has not been generated or produced yet by Xcode. The second file hello world test.exe test represents testing code. Displaying the actual hello world message on our screen is pretty simple. 
we go to the main.storyboard file and we need to display static text hello world inside the screen. Static text can be displayed by adding a control or a widget. Go to the right hand bottom of the screen and you see this third tab. It's called an object library that lets you add widgets. In our case, we need a label. So we are going to simply type label here and you see it says a variably sized amount of static text. Let's zoom out and drag this control. Just drag it and drop it anywhere you want. Now notice that as we come here, you see those blue guidelines that pop up, for example, to center the label at the screen or to go at the top and there's another one at the top. You go to the left, there's one more at the left and so on, right? Let's place it at the top left right here with this guide. There you go. Now you can just double click it and you can edit it. Just double click there and you can say hello world here. Just hit return and you're done editing. You can again move it if you want. You can just drag it once again and it's going to give you those guidelines. Top left, that's what we want. And that's all we need to do. Let's run the app and see if we can see this message. Zoom out to run the app. Just go to the top left here and you see this button that says build and then run the current scheme. So let's do that. In my case, I have an iPhone 6 here. If you run this here at the top, immediately you will get a message at the top that says building hello world and it says linking here. Let's zoom out and you will see the iOS emulator that pops up. So everything is good, build succeeded. And we have the iOS emulator here. Let's maximize the iOS emulator. And this will be the iPhone 6 on which I'm going to run this Hello World app. So there's my launch screen that pops up, which has this simple Hello World message being displayed. And once the launch is complete or the splash screen is done, we have the Hello World from Webs and SlideNode popping up inside our iPhone. If you're watching this right now, give yourself a big pat on the back because bam, that's our first app, an iPhone. But before you get too excited and carried away, let me tell you something. We are far from over. How to build a splash screen, how to make launcher icons, how to customize this. It currently looks pretty bad. How can we make it look better? What is model view control architecture? What happens when you center the text on your interface builder and the iPhone doesn't show it properly? Why so? What is auto layout? All these things are coming up in the next video. We are also on Udemy in the meanwhile, you can just type slide on Udemy on Google and our social networks on Facebook and Twitter and all the code that we write is available on slide node github, which is github.com forward slash slide node. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to slide node and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.